12 districts, each under the administration of the capital, make up Pan Am. After an attempted rebellion against the capital fails, each district is compelled to select a boy and a girl as tributes. In the yearly Hunger Games, where only one survives, competitors between the ages of 12 and 18 must battle to the death. Prim is reassured by Katniss Everdeen that she won't be selected for the District 12 competitions. She sings her younger sister to sleep before heading out. Their mother helps them get ready for the big day the following day. To console Prim, Katniss offers her the Mockingjay pin as a lucky charm. All minors aged 12 to 18 are then shuffled in front of the town center for the reaping. A lady gladly greets them and plays a film about the uprising in the Hunger Games. After that, she selects a name from the girls' bowl and declares Prim the female tribute for this year. All eyes turn to watch Prim approach the stage cautiously. With a quick step, Katniss volunteers to take her position instead of his sister. Following Katniss's escort to the stage, the audience honors her and gives her a three-finger salute as they say goodbye. Peter is then selected by the woman from the young men's bowl. Inside the town hall, Katniss says goodbye to her family and gives them survival tips for the time she will be gone. When Peter brings up their plans throughout the ride, Katniss brushes him off. The sole surviving District 12 champion in the game arrives shortly after their mentor, Haymitch. Instead of offering advice, Haymitch advises them to accept their deaths. Haymitch also advises them to make the audience like them to gain sponsors. Sponsors will provide them with life-saving supplies. In the capital, tributes arrive in chariots carrying synthetic fire on their backs. Katniss and Peter, dressed in black, are the main attraction. President Snow greets them and wishes them luck. Their training begins the next day, with tributes from District 1 and 2 training for the game since childhood. Haymitch suggests their arrogance may be a weakness. Katniss reveals that Peter is skilled with a bow, as his father buys squirrels she hunts. Katniss reveals that Peter is strong but doesn't give him a chance of winning. His mother's statement that District 12 of May has a winner is cited as evidence. The next day, Peter struggles in training and the career tributes mock him. Peter is told to raise some weights by Katniss. To show the careers his power, Peter tosses a hefty metal ball across the room with ease. Subsequently, Peter practices his camouflage with paint, telling Katniss that he used to adorn pastries at the Bay Bakery. In a televised interview with Caesar the next day, Peter confesses his emotions for Katniss. After the interview, Katniss confronts Peter and tells him that she looks weak. She is corrected by Haymitch, who remarks that Peter made her appear appealing. He highlights that by portraying them as star-crossed lovers, he may obtain sponsors for them. Katniss finds Peter staring out the window that night as she fights to fall asleep. She joins him and apologizes for criticizing him earlier. The next day at the start of the games, the tributes stand on their platforms with the cornucopia full of supplies laid out before them. When the countdown reaches zero, the tributes run while the others gather supplies. Peter heads straight for the woods, and many people are killed by the careers, while Katniss takes a bag of clove and throws a knife at her but she catches it with her bag. After that, Katniss flees into the forest, where she encounters the tribute from District 5. They look at one other till Fox leaves, and she refers to him as her fox face. As soon as the slaughter cannons are fired to honor all of the tributes who have died, Katniss flees as far into the woods as she can. After counting the cannons, Katniss discovers that 12 tributes have already passed away. She uses her hunting prowess to build traps, find a water source, and bring in creatures for meals. She scales a tree and spends the night strapped to a branch. Soon after, Katniss is reassured that Peter is still alive by a screen in the sky that shows all of the fallen tributes. Katniss notices later that someone has built a campfire nearby, the couriers find the tribute who started the fire and attack her. Though Katniss is astonished to find Peter with them, she does notice the couriers laughing at the tribute they just killed. Even though they are unaware that Katniss is close by, Peter seems to be pointing them in her direction. Katniss continues to move the following day, and the developers of the game observe that she is approaching the edge of the arena. To get her to return to the center, they light a forest fire. Fire cannons targeted at Katniss are dodging as she flees the flames. Attacks planned by the Seneca bring Katniss to a river, where she is eventually discovered by the couriers. They pursue Katniss, but she manages to grab a tree and soars above them. Cato tries to climb but falls, Glimmers then fires an arrow but it misses. Peter suggests waiting for her to climb down because she can't stay there forever. Haymitch bargains with sponsors after Katniss is trapped and suffering from a burn wound. She receives medicine for her wound and later sees Rue on a tree, suggesting using a wasp nest against the couriers. Katniss cuts down the branches, causing the nest to fall on the couriers. 
Glimmer is swarmed and Katniss finds her body and pries her bow and arrow. Peter tells her to escape, and she stumbles through the woods. When she wakes, she finds leaves on her arms and Rue nearby. Rue tells her that Peter is still alive and that the careers are all near the cornucopia. Katniss instructs Rue to use the root of light fires to attract careers while she destroys their supplies. Rue suggests singing a song to let each other know they're okay. Katniss reaches the clearing's edge and notices the supplies piled up, she also notices that the ground surrounding the platforms has been excavated. Suddenly Marvel at District 1 Tribute notices smoke in the woods and orders his allies to investigate. They leave a District 3 boy to guard the area. Katniss then stands back and watches as Fox Face skips across the clearing to steal food. This assists Katniss in determining that the careers have dug up the mines used them around the platforms and planted them near the supplies. Katniss shoots an apple bag causing the fruits to fall and activating the mines that blow up the supplies. The courier returns and Kato snaps the District 3 boy's neck for failing to guard their supplies. Katniss returns to the forest whistling, however she does not hear Rue's song repeated to her. When Katniss hears Rue scream, she follows her and discovers her trapped. After Katniss frees Rue, Marvel shows up and hurls a spear. Katniss aims an arrow at him, but Rue is struck in the stomach. Rue reassures Katniss that she will win the tournament and asks her to sing as she sobs while holding Katniss in her arms. As Rue slips away, Katniss performs the same song she does for Prim. When Katniss passes away, she sobs. After that, she covers Rue's body in flowers and offers her the three-finger salute, which infuriates the residents of District 11 who are grieving over the young girl's passing. A riot is started by numerous District 11 residents, Claudia. He declares that if two tributes are from the same district, they have an opportunity to win the games. When Katniss hears this, she goes in search of Peter, who is hiding along the riverbank. She assists him in hiding inside a cave but Cato wounds Peter making him unable to move much. Katniss promises to get medicine but Peter points out that he lacks sponsors, getting the idea Katniss kisses him on the cheek. Not long after Katniss discovers a package containing a note from Haymitch, telling her that the kiss was insufficient. The package is a soup for Peter so she helps feed him. Early in the morning, Claudius declares that there will be a feast at the cornucopia, complete with offerings for every tribute. Peter begs her to stay, and Katniss thinks his medication will be there. She kisses him and curls up on his lap. But while he's dozing off, Katniss sneaks out and hides in the forest close to the cornucopia, where she discovers four bags on a table. Fox Face swiftly grabs her bag and dashes into the woods before she has a chance to move. Katniss follows, but before she can retrieve her bag, a knife is thrown at her. Katniss tries to shoot it, but she is tackled. Clove drives a knife toward Katniss which she struggles to deflect, Clove quickly pins Katniss's arms to the ground and mocks her about Peter and Ruth Resch. She grabs Clove and pins her against the cornucopia he accuses her of murdering Rue and slams Clove into the cornucopia breaking her neck. Then he turns to face Katniss, promising to save her life for Rue once more. Taking her backpack, Katniss runs away. When she gets to the cave, she awakens Peter and gives him the medication right away for his wound. He then offers to apply it to the incision caused on her forehead by the cut clove. Their romantic moment captures the attention of everyone. The following day, Katniss and Peter parted ways to gather supplies when Katniss hears a cannon, she runs to find Peter and finds his jacket full of berries that have been locked in the night. When Peter finally shows up, Katniss chastises him for having picked the poisonous berries. They conclude that Fox Face follows Peter and steals the berries when they later find him dead and clutching nightlock berries. To utilize the berries against Cato, Katniss gathers them. In the dark, Katniss and Peter are preparing to finish a game when a thresh is killed by a cannon. They flee, but more beasts follow them until they reach a clearing. They climb over the cornucopia, but Cato is waiting for them. Peter tackles Cato but throws him down before swinging his sword at Katniss. Cato holds Katniss down, but Peter pulls him away. Katniss points her bow at Cato, but he is Peter by the throat. Cato pushes Katniss to shoot, causing both of them to fall. Peter points at Cato's hand, and Katniss shoots at it, allowing the beast to feast on him. The beast leaves when he dies. To go home, the two set out down. Conversely, Claudius declares that one of the tributes must die because the earlier modification that would have permitted two tributes to win has been overturned. Katniss reaches into her pocket for the night-locked berries and refuses to follow Peter's instructions to shoot him to win the game. For them to die together, she gives Peter half. Claudia considers them victorious after stopping them from consuming the berries. Haymitch informs Katniss that the capital isn't happy with her victory after the games. 
Hamish instructs her to pretend to be so hopelessly in love with Peter, that she would rather die than be separated from him. With this in mind, Katniss acts in love while in public. Katniss tells Peter on the train, back home that she wants to forget what happened to them back in their district. The two are welcomed and celebrated. Snow unbeknownst to them is keeping a close eye on their every move. 